Okay, let's talk about the wide receivers here at the top of our rankings. We have Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, Stefan Diggs. I don't think, you know, much of a surprise there to have those big three at the top. Sean, who are you high on at wide receiver? Uh, I think it's going to be hard to pass up Alan Lazard at uh, 4,200 this week. You know, he's coming off a four catch, 96 yard touchdown game against the Rams. Um, he had a 40% share of uh, his team's air yards last week, which is the fourth highest share of the divisional round. Um, he's trending up at the right time. And, you know, we have to remember that he missed weeks four through 10 due to his uh, core muscle injury. So he's been sort of eased back and, um, you know, getting into the swing of things. So I think having the bye week in the first round of the playoffs helped. Uh, but we also have to remember he was wide receiver seven in half point PPR um, after the first three weeks of the season um, before the injury. So I think, um, you know, he's probably closer to 100% um, pretty much where he was at that time. So I, I'm high on him this week. And like I said, 4,200, especially on this slate, uh, it's going to be hard to pass him up. Rayvon, who do you like? I really like Chris Godwin. Uh, he's 5,400. You, you, Shreveman, you already mentioned Antonio Brown a little banged up. Looks like it's not serious. So I think Brown he'll, will play, but uh, those Green Bay, especially Jair Alexander on the outside, that's going to be either Brown or Mike Evans, depending on you know how they line guys up. But Godwin should uh, escape him and face Chandon Sullivan in the slot. Uh, and then you look at Godwin and he ran more routes than uh, any other Tampa Bay player last week. 100% of the uh, of the snaps, uh, the passing snaps, did Chris Godwin run a route compared to 94% for Evans, 56 per, for Brown, 24% for Tyler Johnson, who they really like. So Tyler Johnson, watch out for him if Brown doesn't play or is banged up because they really like Johnson, um, and 21% and for Miller. So uh, I really like Godwin at 5,400. He's a guy that, um, especially if Tampa Bay gets down behind in game script, or even if they don't, um, he's, he has the potential to put up one of those, you know, eight catch, 100-yard games and equal – an Adams, a Diggs, a Tyreek, you know, with the volume. So uh, Chris Godwin for me. I'm still pretty high on Tyreek. And this is, in theory, even if Mahomes is out, although I would I would scale him back uh, and change projections if, uh, if Mahomes is out. But Tyreek, when he's on the outside, he's likely to face number one cornerback, Tredavious White. But I don't think that White really has the athleticism to stick with Hill. And then plus Tyreek still runs a lot of his routes from the slot anyway. And White almost never goes into the slot. So this isn't going to be a, a true shadow situation. Um, I know that Tyreek really didn't do much uh, in week six when these teams faced each other, but it was also a situation where they didn't need Tyreek Hill to do a lot. And uh, also Tyreek Hill in the first half of the season just wasn't being targeted with the volume that he's getting now. So uh, I'm not putting really too much stock into what we saw in week six. Uh, I'm also high on Devontae Adams, uh, number one cornerback, Carlton Davis. He left last week with a concussion for Tampa Bay. Uh, So if he's out, uh, you know, a significantly better matchup, I think, for him than if Carlton Davis is in. So right now I'm operating slightly under the assumption that Carlton Davis is out, but that's something to, uh, to monitor as well. And honestly, even if Davis is in like Devonte Adams is, is great in almost any matchup. So uh, something to keep an eye on there with Davis, but uh, I'm still pretty high on Adams. Rayvon kicking it to you here. Who is someone you are low on? So for me, it's, uh, going to be Antonio Brown for, and to a lesser extent, Mike Evans, if, if Brown plays uh, more so Brown, because I think he will draw that assignment on Jair Alexander. They haven't really been shadowing um, the way they were in the first half of the season. So Brown could get the majority of his snaps on Alexander. And uh, again, I think Godwin is, is, is going to be the number one target here. Um, Jair, Jair Alexander has allowed just a, uh, just 36 of 71, targets caught in for, for 9.3 yards per reception, 4.7 yards per target, just two scores all year. So um, Brown getting that number one assignment, his routes run per drop back have gone from 91 to 60 to 56% from week 17 through the you know first round, second round. And he's, he's been that guy that even though he's the third wide receiver and they play a lot of um, three wide sets, he's still been in that uh, 60, 50 to high fifties or mid sixties for most of the season with the Bucks. So um, Antonio Brown is a guy who, uh, I will be fading completely or like maybe like 5% exposure, 10% at most uh, this week. 
Yeah. And I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, Cause he is a little bit banged up and just in terms of how they've aligned their wide receivers so far, uh, Brown will be matched up on Alexander because they have not been using Alexander in shadow coverage. Uh, even think, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago when we saw uh, the Washington football team play against uh, the Packers, uh, that would have been a, a perfect game. Am I, am I imagining this right? Did that game happen? No, no it was a buck. You're thinking it you're was the Bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but sorry, no, he hasn't that. shadowed since like week right. seven. He, has, like, he hasn't. Yeah. Yes. I'm just going to undo that. Yeah. So yeah, as you say, we haven't seen, uh, we haven't seen Alexander shadow, for at least half a season. Uh, and if they haven't done it to this point, I really don't see why they would change all of that up now. So I'm imagining we will see that matchup quite a bit of Brown on Alexander. And that really does favor Alexander. Sean, who are you low on a wide receiver? Uh, I'm piling on on Antonio Brown. Uh, for all the reasons you guys mentioned, um, his 56% routes run rate tied for the lowest of the season for him. Um, obviously that could be due to the knee injury, but honestly, I think they're perfectly fine turning to guys like Scotty Miller and Tyler Johnson. I think they're pretty high on both. Um, and Tyler Johnson is a guy I'm already thinking ahead to 2021. Um, you know, Godwin and Antonio Brown are free agents. I can't imagine them keeping Antonio Brown on. Uh, Brady loves Tyler Johnson. So I think just having an excuse to use these guys um, is good enough for them. So I'll, I'll have zero shares of Antonio Brown this week. Yeah, that Tyra Johnson call, like, I love it because, and this is one thing that helps with watching games and not just looking at the numbers. There was a weight pass in that game against New Orleans where Brady threw it uh, out, way outside. And Tyra Johnson <laughs> just, like, flipped around and made, like, they, call, they were calling it, like, one of the catches of the year on the telecast, which yeah. was, it was a bit much. But, like, it was a really good catch at a really clutch point in the game for the number five now now number four wide receiver um so like his he went 24 percent of routes run to 21 percent for miller the week before 19 percent for johnson seven percent for miller so let's say brown isn't getting his full compliment keep tyler johnson in mind yep. for your tournaments because it may very well be him now miller obviously has some viability too cameron braid all those guys but like keep tyler johnson in mind because i i guarantee that he's going to be the kind of a forgotten man Yep. Uh, in terms of ownership this week. Yeah, and Tyler Johnson, uh, I mean, just to talk about him some more, let's turn this into the Tyler Johnson podcast. Good, love Sean, it. Sean, That's what I'm, I try I'm, to do. I I'm with to do you. That. I'm with you on next year, especially, yeah. um, because of the guys who are going to be leaving. But also, I mean, Tyler Johnson was a really good college wide receiver mm -hmm. just in terms of the the production he had the market share he had in minnesota like very underappreciated wide receiver and he played a lot of his time in the slot but we have seen him have success in the nfl out wide which is really encouraging that he's not going to be limited just to a slot receiver where he he could have the flexibility the versatility to move all across the formation so like that speaks really well about the the potential that he has long term so 100 percent with you on uh on what we might see out of tyler johnson uh potentially this week but also next year um one guy i'm relatively low on i want to try to contextualize this correctly is stefan diggs like i still have him in the top three obviously like stefan diggs is great but this year the chiefs have allowed the second fewest fantasy points to wide receivers primarily because of their scheme uh and in week six Diggs had just 46 yards on eight targets against the Chiefs. He also had a touchdown, but it was clearly one of his worst games of the year. Uh, so in any game, Diggs is capable of going off, but I think he just has a little bit lower of a median projection and a little bit lower of a floor this week relative to what we see out of him in most weeks. All right, Sean, give us the wide receiver player prop. So uh, last week, if you remember, I, I did um, how many times Chad will take uh, Friedman's <laughs> bet on convince me versus David Joku receptions. Uh, Chad was well aware of it. So he I don't think he took any of your bets. Right? That, that is correct. And, and by the way, <laughs> by the way, fantastic weekend. Fantastic right, weekend. Well, we, yeah. we all knew that would happen. But uh, so you're welcome. And then Njoku obviously went off for four catches. So it wasn't even close. Um, I'm going to have a, a prop here that Chad can't ruin. Um, it, it's going to be the total number of winning bets we give on Convince Me. So out of our nine total bets, how many will we win versus Chris Godwin's receptions? I'm going over because over even though uh, Godwin's receptions, just because oh. number one, I love the matchup, but number two, uh, I would I would project us to get about, I would say the, the median for us should be about six, maybe 5.5 in that range, 5.5 to six out of nine. Uh, 
Well, how it's many a, how many receptions do you have Godwin for? <laughs> That's already pretty high. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have Godwin for I have Godwin in that same. I have Godwin for five point six median, but uh, I think that you know I think the ceiling is a lot higher because, for example, right now I'm still projecting Brown. I haven't done like my full matchup adjustments on Brown um, and, and Alexander and everyone, so I think Godwin will go up, and I, I do think you know. 63 percent for us it's probably actually the median so it probably should be around six but uh this is kind of a gut call i like god well th- i mean just thinking about it well we should go three and oh and player props right well we, sh- we should then, but i mean and then never know th- there's going to be a higher correlation i mean last week we were, we were on the same side on um one spread and one total right so th- yeah. it's going to be uh, a high scene and high floor for our picks this week i, I think we'll either go eight and one or uh you know two and seven so yeah, I'm gonna stay <laughs> humble. That's I'm gonna stay humble. I'm gonna say we get we, we if we go five out of nine, that's still above fifty percent. But it, it's it allows for some humility, and, and I expect Chris Godwin to go over that. You know, Rayvon, you got <laughs> you got to be a company man here. I mean, we're yeah. we're going over, right? Uh, I I am a company man. Chad Millman has told us to fade you at all costs. That's <laughs> straight from the boss. <laughs> okay, well, let's assume that that I go zero and three. Oh, all right, you God. you guys still have the, the chance because, as Sean said, you guys are going to be correlated with a lot of your picks. You mm-hmm. still have the chance of collectively going six and zero. Yep. Uh, I have Godwin projected right at five and a half, uh, and so I will take the over on this uh, because even if I go zero and three, let's be honest, I'm I'm not going zero and three. Well, I mean, I I might famous last words. I I that's going to be a sound a sound clip that. Uh, Matt Mitchell throws in my face later, but uh, I, I don't believe I will go 0-3, uh, you know, feel good, had a good weekend last weekend. You know, I, I think I'll probably have a decent weekend now. And uh, I, I trust that you guys will as well. So I, I have to hammer the over on this prop. I bet I bet we're going to go 7-2 and two and Chad will go 1-2 and two with the Betsy picks. Yes, that That's feels accurate. Call. That, you know I, what our two will be like. We'll, Friedman will take the Packers. Yeah. Me and Sean will take the, the Bucks because that's the what the numbers say. Friedman will be right and we'll be wrong, and that that's all. There we that, go. That, that that is my ultimate dream of winning right there. That's how I would really like to win. Uh, yeah. So tune in this uh, Sunday. At yes. Yeah. There's our promo. Now we don't have to shoot a yes, promo. Yes. Yes. 